Hello and welcome to this short review of the posterior thigh. To start things off, let's go ahead and remove some of the muscles of the gluteal region because they are just going to be in our way. We can see one very prominent landmark right here, which is our sciatic nerve. This is going to be our major nerve for the posterior thigh, actually it is the major nerve of the lower limb. Our posterior compartment of the thigh will contain muscles that we refer to as the hamstring muscles. There's actually three main muscles, which we're going to go through one by one in the next few minutes. Our hamstrings are the muscles that extend the thigh and flex the leg. The three main muscles are the biceps femoris, that actually has a long head and a short head, as we're going to see. Then we have the semitendinosus and the semimembranosus. The biceps femoris extends the thigh and flexes the leg. It has two heads, the long head and the short head. You'll see that although the distal attachment is the same, there are different proximal attachments. The long head will cross two joints, which would be the hip joint and the knee joint. It arises on the ischial tuberosity and it attaches distally to the head of the fibula. The long head of the biceps femoris is innervated by the tibial division of the sciatic nerve. The short head of the biceps femoris arises on a region of the femur named the linea aspera. Distally, it joins with the long head of the biceps femoris to then, together with it, attach here on the head of the fibula. The innervation between these two parts of the biceps femoris is different. I mentioned this here is innervated by the tibial division of the sciatic nerve. The short head is different, that's innervated by the common fibular division of the sciatic nerve. The next muscle is our semitendinosus muscle, and as the name suggests, the distal part of it is actually very long and tendinous. Interestingly enough, this contributes to the formation of our goose's foot, namely the pes anserinus. The pes anserinus is made up of the tendons of three muscles, which if you are looking for a mnemonic, makes up sergeant or SGT, which would stand for the sartorius, which actually comes from the front, so from the anterior aspect, and then wraps around and attaches here. The next one is the gracilis, and the last one is the semitendinosus, which is of the posterior compartment of our thigh. The semitendinosus has a proximal attachment also on the ischial tuberosity of the hip, and the distal attachment we've just seen, which is on the superior surface of the medial tibia, together with the tendons of these other two muscles. It's innervated by the tibial division of the sciatic nerve, which we can now see highlighted right here. We can also see at this level, shining through already, how the sciatic nerve, just before it enters the popliteal fossa, splits into the tibial and the common fibular nerves. Another muscle that is also attaching to the ischial tuberosity is the semimembranosus. Semimembranosus, just as the semitendinosus, also travels downward, and this here will then attach on the medial condyle of the tibia. The semimembranosus is also innervated by the tibial division of the sciatic nerve. Both of our semis extend the thigh and flex the leg. Now let's have a look at our adductor magnus. Let's remember that the adductor magnus actually had two parts. It had a hamstring part and a adductor part. To make it visible, let's start hiding some of the muscles that we've already seen. Here's our adductor magnus, and we can see both parts now. Here's the hamstring part, and here is the adductor part. 
The hamstring part originates on the ischial tuberosity and its distal attachment is on the adductor tubercle of the femur. It's innervated by the tibial division of the sciatic nerve. The adductor part of the adductor magnus has a proximal attachment up here coming from the inferior ramus of the pubis. Its distal attachment is along the linea aspera of the femur and on a line named the medial supracondylar line. As this actually functions as an adductor, it'll also be innervated by the nerve of this compartment, which would be the obturator nerve. Now we'll move on to the popliteal fossa. To open up the view for this a little more, let's go ahead and hide some of these muscles. One of the first things you should observe when you're in lab is that just on the superior border of the popliteal fossa, this is where you're going to find the division of the sciatic nerve into the tibial and the common fibular nerves. This is important to know because at a later time point we'll be dissecting the anterior and the lateral leg and these nerves will be playing a role in these dissections. One feature we should all be paying attention to in lab is this region. This is called the adductor hiatus. This is a opening in the aponeurosis of the adductor magnus. And so before these two vessels pass through here, we still call these the femoral artery and the femoral vein. After these two vessels pass through, these are then called the popliteal artery and popliteal vein. So these structures pass through the adductor hiatus. Following our vasculature inferiorly a little bit, we can also have a look at some of the branches that are coming off. For simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and hide the veins so we can focus on the popliteal artery and the genicular arteries. So let's have a look at some of the vascular branches in the popliteal region. So as Gino means knee, the genicular arteries are going to be the arteries of the knee, and we will have two sets of arteries, which would be the medial superior genicular artery, the medial inferior genicular artery, and where we have medial arteries, we should also have lateral inferior and the lateral superior genicular artery. After all of these branches have been given off, the popliteal artery actually splits into two different arteries, which will be called the anterior and posterior tibial arteries. And deep within the popliteal fossa, there is one more muscle, which is called the popliteus muscle. This muscle has the function of unlocking the knee when your knee was locked. And here's another muscle which we're actually going to encounter again when we're doing the posterior aspect of the leg. This one is called the plantaris muscle. Plantaris muscle is interesting because it has a very, very long tendon, as you can see here. The tendon will go all the way inferiorly and then blend with the calcaneal tendon. You'll see that when we do the posterior leg. And it actually looks so much like a nerve that oftentimes it is accidentally also named or labeled as a nerve on exams. This is why it's also called the fool's nerve. And this concludes today's review. Thank you very much as usual for your attention. I hope this was useful for you.